segment of Erie Flashback, we go back to September of 1960 when Erie went wild over a visit from a U.S. Senator hoping to be president. The Senator flew in on his plane, the Caroline, stayed overnight in downtown Erie, and then spoke to a huge crowd of supporters. The reception in Erie for then-Senator John F. Kennedy of Massachusetts rivaled that of a rock star. His speech in front of the old Lawrence Hotel in downtown Erie drew thousands. One of the men sitting next to JFK on the platform was former Times News reporter Ed Wellages. What you remember about that affair, and that was a long time ago, of course, but what you remember, and I personally will never forget, is the excitement that he generated. And part of it, of course, was that there was an awful lot of young people there. The young people came from Erie's Catholic schools, all closed to let students cheer on the first Catholic presidential candidate. What you're looking at is never-before-seen silent film of Kennedy's appearance in Erie, shot by one of those young people who later became my mother. We want Kennedy, chants rose up from the crowd. People crammed into the windows of every building at 10th and Peach, hoping to see the senator. Kennedy jokingly asked if anyone ever went to school in Erie. There are certain people that are just, they're exciting. When they enter a room, they create a stir. Some people do that. Uh, John F. Kennedy had that ability. Uh, part of it was just physical appearance. Uh, part of it was an aura around him. Part of it was the fact that as a very young man, he was a senator. He was running for president of the United States. Uh, he had it. That Kennedy charm and charisma even drew a future Erie mayor into politics. This yearbook photo shows Joyce Savacchio, chosen by local Democrats to be a Kennedy girl. She campaigned for the senator and tried, in vain, to meet him. We formed an honor guard within the Lawrence Hotel, and he was going to pass through that uh, to go in and to meet some Democrats inside. And so I thought, this was my big chance. Now, I missed it at the airport. It didn't work there. So, But this was going to be my big moment. I was going to sh shake the hand of the next president of the United States. And as he came through the corridor, he did turn to me. Uh, he did smile, that great smile. And he did say hello and went to reach out his hand. And uh, a security agent moved him aside. So, But it, you know, at least I got that close to him. And it, it was very, very exciting. Kennedy's speech that day did not differ much from his other stump speeches on the campaign trail. He mostly warned of the threat of the Soviet Union. Well, it just says whatever he said didn't matter. Frankly, I don't think it would have made much difference in that enthusiasm, no matter what he just said. He just, he was, he, he generated excitement. The excitement was there, and people were ready to roar and cheer no matter what he said. Of course, Kennedy won the 1960 election, becoming America's youngest president. His only visit to Erie is just a small part of the legend of Camelot, but something a local history professor won't ever forget. Paul Faust recalls Kennedy as that young prince who became a king, only to be taken before his time, leaving us with what might have been. You have to stop and think he'd be pushing 90 years old if he were still alive today. You just can't imagine John F. Kennedy being an old man uh, uh, of that, you know, of that age. Uh, but he, I think he inspired the country and he gave the country great hope at that time when we needed that. Kennedy's opponent, then Vice President Richard Nixon, also came to Erie on November 1st of 1960.